Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. In the Gospel of St. Luke, chapter 2, and verse number 7, the Bible says, And she brought forth her firstborn son, and wrapped him in swaddling clothes, and laid him in a manger, because there was no room for them in the inn. Our lives are always full. Our family, our daily obligations, our occupations, and for some Christian service, all keeps us busy. And when we fulfill these obligations and we fulfill this role, we are not to be blamed for this because this is a part of ordinary life. But the question we need to ask ourselves this morning, am I giving Jesus his rightful place in my life? Am I giving Jesus his rightful place in my heart? Are we willing to empty ourselves? We need to give more room for Jesus Christ in our life because we need to understand that Jesus Christ really is a personal Savior. Yes, he has loved the world, but he also has loved us individually. The Bible says in the Gospel of St. John, chapter 15, and verse number 9, As the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Continue in my love. Do you understand that Jesus Christ loves each one of you for who you are? No matter how busy you are, no matter how many things you've got on your plate, no matter how many things you're facing and you're going through, Jesus Christ loves you. And are you willing to empty yourself? Are you willing to give yourself? Are you willing to yield yourself? Our lives are too full. Our hearts are too full. Our time is too full. Our days are too full. And I'm afraid that a lot of times we are like the innkeeper with no room for Jesus. The innkeeper at Bethlehem, no doubt, was a good man. No doubt he was an honest man. No doubt he was a sincere man. But because of the census that was required from Rome, people that had family roots in Bethlehem had to go back to Bethlehem at the time of the census. And two of these people were Mary and Joseph, and Mary who was pregnant with Jesus Christ. He may have even been a good servant of the Lord going to the temple, offering up the sacrifices that were required by the law. But the Bible tells us that when Mary and Joseph came into Bethlehem, as they searched the city from hotel to hotel, from rooming house to rooming house, there was no room for them in the inn. And the Bible says in our scripture reading in Luke chapter 2 and verse number 7, And she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger, because there was no room for him, no room for them in the inn. The man cannot be blamed because his inn was full, but perhaps he can be blamed for not living close enough to the Lord, not recognizing what the scripture had to say, the prophetic message and fulfillment that a Messiah was going to be born at Bethlehem Ephrata, according to the prophet Micah chapter 5 and verse number 2. Maybe he did not realize the scripture of Isaiah chapter 7 and verse number 14, a virgin shall conceive and bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus. So maybe he was not living as close to God as he needed to live to recognize what a great opportunity was coming into his life, what a great opportunity was coming into his presence to recognize that Jesus Christ, to recognize that the Savior, to recognize that the Messiah was near. How many spiritual opportunities and I ask ourselves this question collectively. How many spiritual opportunities and how many chances have you and I missed because we were not spiritually prepared? We were so full of other things that we did not recognize the glory of God. We did not recognize the power of God. We did not recognize the chance and the opportunity that we have to allow Jesus Christ to fulfill our heart and to fill our life full of the power of the Holy Ghost. How many times in our lives have we sensed and we fail to sense God's presence 
because we were so caught up with other things, because our life and our heart was too full with the pleasures of the world, with opportunities, with family, with friends, with other things that we have allowed to encroach within our lives. How many times has Christ been near to you but your eyes were too blind to see the opportunity as God dealt with your heart, as God talked to you, as God tried to draw you to him to let you recognize, now is the day of salvation. Now is the time to unpack your life of bitterness and envy and hatred and sin and all the things that the world has to offer. The Bible says in Revelation chapter 3, beginning with verse number 17, because thou sayest, I am rich and increase with goods and have need of nothing. You did not know that you are wretched. You did not know that you are miserable. You did not know that you are poor and blind and naked. And so Jesus pleaded with the church, and Jesus pleads with you and me today, I counsel thee to buy of me gold tried in the fire, that you mayest be rich and have white raiment, that you mayest be clothed, and that the shame of your nakedness do not appear and that your eyes would be anointed with eye salve that you may see. How many times have the voices, the angel, angelic voices, has had a message for you to recognize that the Messiah is here, that you are to come, you are to worship, you are to realize that Jesus Christ is here for you. But are you too spiritually deaf to hear the voice? Are you too spiritually blind that you cannot see the glory of God, the power of God, the majesty of God? I want to ask you and I a question. Are we missing God's best that he has for us this Christmas? Christmas is in a week and a half, and it's not the trees. It's not the lights. It's not the gifts under the trees or the parties or the dinners that you will go to. But yet it is the greatest opportunity that you can empty yourself. You can come to a Savior. Amen. You can allow Jesus Christ to fulfill you because he will break every chain. He will break the chains of sin. He will break the chains of bitterness. He will break, break the chains of loneliness. He will break the chains of drugs. He will break the chains of alcohol. He will break the chains of depression because he has come to save you. He has come to reach down and touch you and to do a work in your life. But are you too full of other things? Are you like the innkeeper at Bethlehem that you're in, your life is full of other things? The Christmas call this year and the Christmas drama is to empty yourself, to unpack yourself for the heavenly journey, the heavenly destination. I plead with you today, will you make room for him? Will you submit your life? Will you submit your heart to sell out completely to the Lord that you will humble yourself and you will come with a self-examination and recognize, I need Jesus. I need Jesus. I need Jesus. I don't need worldly pleasures. I don't need worldly influences. I don't need all these things that have made me so unhappy and made me so wretched and miserable and poor and blind and naked. But I'm talking about a joy. I'm talking about out of peace right now. I'm talking about a fulfillment of life. And if you will let Jesus touch you, Jesus will fill your heart. Jesus will fill your soul. But will you be honest with yourself that you will stand before him and say, Lord, I need you. I, 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 my life is in a mess. My life is at the bottom right now. I need your touch. I need your help. I need your blessing. Are you willing to be honest with yourself that you're willing to cut out some of the things in your life that's making your life too full? You don't have time for the Lord. You don't have time for church. You don't have time for Bible reading. You don't have time for prayer. You don't have time for dedication and consecration to God because you're just too full. Are you willing to say today that I'm going to empty myself? I'm going to remove some things in my life because I need to make room in my heart for Jesus. I need to make room in my heart for the love of God so that I can put Jesus in his rightful place in my soul and in my heart. Will you empty yourself so that you can have that closer 
personal walk with God, that you can experience the love of God in a real and mighty way. That it is no longer just a, a, a religious idolatry or religious theology or a religious idea, but it has become real to you. That the anointing and the power of God, that the anointing and the blessing of God, that the glory of God has filled your soul, that the power of God is moving within your spirit, that the anointing of the Lord is just flowing for you in a real and mighty way. Can you say today, Jesus? I am willing to empty myself. I am willing to surrender myself. I am willing to yield myself. As the last song said, anything that takes the place of God, and this is just a little bit of a paraphrase, anything that we love, anything that we see, anything that we want, amen, becomes an idol in our life when it takes the place of Jesus. It doesn't matter if it's family. It doesn't matter if it's job. It doesn't matter if it's money. It doesn't matter if it's popularity. It doesn't matter if it's pleasure. Are you willing to empty yourself of everything that robs Jesus of his rightful place in your life? Life. Amen. So he can be king of kings and he can be Lord of lords. You saw the video a few moments ago of that homeless woman named Connie. And even though you may not be homeless today, are you homeless spiritually? That you, you are not a part of the family of God. You are wandering in this world seeking, seeking an answer seeking something that will quench the spirit, that will quench the cry within your spirit and within your soul. Are you homeless spiritually today? That it's time to empty yourself. It's time to be honest with yourself. It's time to come to the place that Jesus, I need you. Jesus, I want you to fill me with the Holy Ghost. I am willing to repent of my sins. I'm willing to turn myself, amen, from the ways of the world that I can walk hand in hand with you, that I will dedicate and consecrate my life and my soul to you. Empty yourself. Empty yourself of everything that robs Jesus of his rightful place. Empty your house, not only your physical house, but your spiritual house. Empty your plans that you may have. Empty your time and empty your heart and say, Lord, I want you to fill it. I want you to break the chains. I want you to set me free. I want the Holy Ghost to move and minister in my spirit and in my life and in my soul. The Bible says in Matthew chapter 12, beginning with verse number 43, that when an unclean spirit is gone out of a man, he walketh through the dry places seeking rest and findeth none. There are too many people that just for the brief moment they empty their lives, but yet they don't fill it with the power of God. They don't fill it with the presence of God. And then the Bible says in verse number 44, in the process of time, then he saith, I will return into my house from whence I came out. And when he has come, he findeth it empty, swept, and garnished. And the scripture goes on to say that he brings seven other unclean spirits worse than himself to fill that house. How many times do we, we, we are in a service and we are touched by the Spirit of God? We ask God to forgive us. We ask God to cleanse us. We ask God to move with inside of us. And God washes our heart. God cleanses us. We're baptized in Jesus' name. But yet we do not allow him to fill us. Then everything that was emptied out of our life, no matter what it was, drugs, alcohol, depression, self-love, amen, covetousness, some of the things that were mentioned up here, amen, by these great drama team members this morning, amen, they will come back in a vengeance, they will come back in a mighty way, and they will destroy your life. You say, preacher, you don't know what you're talking about. Oh, yes, I do. I know what I'm talking about this morning. But I have some hope for you. I said, I have some hope for you. I said, I have some hope for you. There is one that is called Jesus Christ. He wants to give you a gift this morning. He wants to give you the gift of eternal life. He wants to give you a gift that he will become your Savior. Amen. That he will fill you full of the power of the Holy Ghost. He will give you a new life. He will cleanse your heart. He will cleanse your spirit. He will cleanse your soul he will turn you around but are you willing to empty yourself are you willing to say God this Christmas this season I'm going to empty myself because I want to make that heavenly journey my home 
empty yourself and fill it with Jesus so that he will give you more peace. Empty yourself and give your life to Jesus so that he will give you more love. Empty yourself so that Jesus will become real to you. The Bible says in Romans chapter 15 and verse number 13, Now the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing that you may abound in hope through the power of the Holy Ghost. The kingdom of God is not meat and drink, verse 27 and 14, Romans says, but it is, it, is pow, it is peace, it's joy, it's righteousness in the Holy Ghost. For you need to understand that the twist and turns of life as they come your way when they throw you through for a loop and you don't know what to do, the hopes and the talents that God has planted with inside of you, amen, the course of life that God wants you to walk, amen. If you do not empty yourself, these other things that you have emptied yourself will begin to overshadow you, amen, and the promise that God has given you and the potential that God has given you will be replaced with the spiritual and and emotional baggage and there are some of you today that are carrying suitcases in your life full of junk there are some of you today that you are so burdened down with the heaviness of life that Jesus Christ wants to set you free he wants to take that garbage from you amen so instead of having it in your hands you can raise your hands and you can shout and you can leap and you can praise God and say thank you Jesus thank you Jesus thank you Jesus for giving me that new life for giving me that new hope and for giving me that new strength. Suitcases and tote bags and body packs and duffel packs that are all packed tight with hurt, with pain, with anger, with bitterness, with worry, with regret, with addiction, with a sin. Jesus will take them off you today. And so the choice is real simple. The choice is real simple. Why would you want to take a journey carrying something heavy? Why would you want to take a journey carrying something that will weigh you down instead of something that is light, instead of something that is easy? The Bible says in Matthew chapter 11, beginning with verse number 28, Jesus said, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart. And you shall find rest unto your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. That is a promise of God today. That is a blessing of God today. You need to understand you cannot take your garbage to heaven. You cannot take your baggage to heaven. You cannot take your sin to heaven. You cannot take your pride to heaven. You cannot take your arrogance to heaven. You cannot take your drugs. You cannot take your alcohol to heaven. Amen. You cannot take the bitterness. You cannot take the unforgiveness. You cannot take all the emotional baggage to heaven. But Jesus is here. I said, come on, church. I said, Jesus is here right now. The Bible says in Matthew 16 and 26, For what is it profited if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? You need to see and understand that life is just temporal, but eternity is forever. And Jesus is here to reach you. Jesus is here to love you. Jesus is here to set you free. The Christian message is not only that you need to empty yourself, but do you know that Jesus Christ as God Almighty emptied himself as well? He emptied himself of heaven's fellowship. He emptied himself of heaven's majesty. He emptied himself of the glory of heaven. For the Bible says in Philippians chapter 2, beginning with verse number 6, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made of himself of no reputation, and took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men. And being found fashioned as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Why did he do this? Why did he set aside the robes of splendor? Why did he set aside the glory of heaven to become made like a man? As I preached the other day, he became like a worm. He became as a worm because he loves you and me. Why? Because he wants to have fellowship with you. He wants to love you. And he wants to take you home. As a preacher, as a minister fulfilling the role of priest, after he turned the age of 30, he owned nothing. He owned nothing but the clothing upon his back. 
and the clothes that were upon his back served as his clothing by day and his covering by night. For the Bible says in Matthew chapter 8 and verse number 20, Jesus saith unto them, The foxes have holes, and the birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man hath nowhere to lay his head. Why did God do this? Because he loved you. Why did God do this? Because he wants to, you to empty your life. He wants you to take the junk out of your life and allow him to fill it with the peace and righteousness and the glory of God. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 8 and verse number 9, For ye know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sakes, my sake, your sake, he became poor, that through his poverty we might become rich. You talking about the love of God? You talking about the mercy of God? You talk about the grace of God? You talk about the blessing of God? Can't you empty yourself today? Can't you say, hey, Lord, I need your touch. Can't you say, Lord, I need your anointing? Can't you say, Lord, I'm t- I, am, I am tired of the way my life is going. I, I'm tired of the pressures of this life. I'm, I'm tired of, of how the heaviness of this life has brought me down. There is no joy. There is no peace. There is no communion. There is no fellowship with you. I've been walking through the wilderness. I've been walking, amen, through the day as a blind man, not understanding and not seeing the way that I've been going. Jesus is here so you can empty yourself. I know this is a Christmas drama and a Christmas play, but yet God is trying to draw some of you. God is trying to talk some of you to empty yourself. He emptied himself of heaven's comfort. He emptied himself of heaven's glory. Can't you empty yourself for him? Can't you empty yourself for time and fellowship with him, to walk with him? Can't you empty yourself of things that are really not important so you can have the love and the mercy and grace of Jesus Christ? Look at Bethlehem's full end. There was no room for the Messiah. There was no room for the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And as I get ready to close, can you look at your own life? Can you look at your own life? And is your life full? Is your life full? But not full of Jesus. Not full of the love of God. Not full of the mercy and grace of God. Hey, Empty yourself, empty yourself now and enjoy the fullness of joy that my God will give you. Our last scripture says in Psalm 16 and verse number 11, Thou will show me the path of life. In thy presence is fullness of joy. At thy right hand there are pleasures forevermore. As you begin to recognize the love of Jesus Christ, as you begin to empty yourself of the things of this world and you come and you kneel at the foot of the Savior, you're willing to repent of your sins, you're willing to be baptized in Jesus' name, you're willing to be filled full of the Holy Ghost, you will find that joy, you will find that peace, you will find that righteousness of life, you will find the glory, you will find the power, you will find the blessing of God. But will you let God touch you today? The choice is yours. Or will you say, there's no room right now, Brother Yusupan. There's no room. I've got other things that I want to do. I've got other goals that I want to accomplish. Jesus is telling you, now is salvation. Now is the time that I will wrap my arms around you. Now is the time that I will fill the loneliness within your heart. Now is the time that I will set your spirit free. Now is the time I will give you hope and give you life and give you life more abundantly. But are you willing to empty yourself? Are you willing to submit yourself? Are you willing to yield yourself to him and let him become your Christmas gift? Hey, that's the greatest thing you can do is let him become your Christmas gift. 
as we stand this morning and Sister Yuzapan gets ready to sing, make sure her mic's unmuted. Amen. That the glory of God and the power of God and the anointing of God will touch your spirit, will touch your heart, will touch your soul. If you'd like to come pray right now, these altars are open. Somebody will set you free. Somebody will pray with you. Let Jesus set you free. Won't you come right now? Won't you come and say, Lord, I want your touch.